In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a voltage regulator using a Zener diode and supercapacitors. So this particular circuit has a battery, a 1 kilo ohm resistor, and a 3.3 volt Zener diode. Now, when I use a 9 volt battery, the output voltage that I read with my meter with this circuit was 3.3 volts. Increasing the battery's voltage to 18 volts, the output voltage was about 3.6. It increased from 3.3 to 3.6. Changing the voltage to 27, the output voltage went up to 3.76. So the Zener diode, it kept the output voltage relatively constant. It's not perfect, it's not an ideal you know, device, but based on the amount of current that flows through it, it will change slightly around 3.3. Decreasing the voltage to 5.5 caused the voltage to drop to 2.96 volts. And when I change it to 1.5, the output voltage remained 1.5, at which point the Zener diode wasn't even conducting any current when the voltage dropped that low. So ideally speaking, when you use a voltage that's higher than the Zener voltage, the output voltage is going to be close to the Zener voltage. If the voltage drops too low, then the output voltage will be the same as the voltage of the battery. One thing I do want to mention is that the Zener diode is in reverse bias mode in this circuit. In the forward bias mode, where current is flowing in this direction, the voltage drop is similar to a typical silicon diode, which it can vary between 0.6 to 0.8 volts, depending on how much current is flowing through it. Now for the circuit that I have, current is flowing in the opposite direction, so it's in reverse bias mode. So the voltage drop is approximately 3.3 volts around the Zener current, IZ. But as the current changes, the voltage across the Zener diode will change. For instance, when I use a 9 volt battery, but a resistance of 500 ohms instead of 1 kilo ohm, the output voltage was 3.6. Now you might be wondering, why does the voltage across the Zener diode change if the value of the resistance change? This is because the voltage across the Zener diode is dependent on the amount of current that is flowing through it. And you could adjust that current by adjusting the resistance of the circuit. So for instance, if we connect a 9 volt battery across a 500 ohm resistor, the amount of current that's going to be flowing in that circuit is 9 divided by 500, which is 0 0.018 amps or 18 milliamps. Now the same is true if we apply an 18 volt battery across a 1 kilo ohm resistor. 18 divided by 1000 will give us 0 0.018 amps or 18 milliamps. So that's why the voltage was the same when using 9 volts in a 500 ohm resistor is because the current flowing through the Zener diode was the same. But now what can we do to decrease the fluctuations of the voltage across the Zener diode? One thing that can be done is adding a supercapacitor across the Zener diode. Now in this example, I'm going to use two supercapacitors in series because the typical voltage of a supercapacitor is 2.7 volts. If you apply a voltage higher than that, you could damage the component. So in series, the maximum voltage rating of these two capacitors will be 5.4 volts. And the Zener diode doesn't really, it's not going to give an output voltage of 5.4 volts based on these numbers. 
The capacitance of each capacitor that I'm using in this example is 10 farads, which is pretty high. Initially, these two capacitors are not charged. The voltage across them is zero. So once you connect this circuit to a nine volt battery, we know that the voltage across the Zener diode is 3.3, but because the capacitors are completely discharged at this point, initially the voltage that you'll read will be zero volts across the two capacitors because the capacitors are being charged. And it's gonna take some time for the capacitors to go from zero volts to charge up to 3.3 volts, which is the voltage across the Zener diode. To increase the speed at which the capacitors charge up, you may need to decrease the resistance. But once you get up to 3.3, the output voltage will be relatively constant. So after charging the two capacitors to the voltage of the Zener diode, I began to run some tests to show the relationship between the voltage of the battery and the output voltage. So at 9 volts, the output voltage is 3.3 when the capacitors are fully charged. Now, increasing the voltage to 18 volts doesn't really change the voltage of the capacitor instantly because it takes a long time for these supercapacitors to charge up when the resistance is at 1K. So initially it's 3.3. But keep in mind, without the capacitors being here, the voltage at this point should be 3.6. So the capacitor will slowly charge from 3.3 to 3.6 over time. But if the voltage changes from 9 volts to 18 volts for a short period of time, let's say only for one second, let's say if you get a voltage spike in a circuit, the output voltage will be relatively constant for that short period of time. It's going to take a long time for it to charge up to 3.6 volts. And that's how the supercapacitor helps to maintain a constant voltage is because it takes a long time for it to charge up to a higher voltage or to charge down to discharge down rather to a lower voltage increasing the voltage of the battery to 27 volts still kept the output voltage at 3.3 even though if the capacitors weren't there the output voltage will be 3.76 it didn't really change much in fact, just to give you the time frame, like regarding how fast the capacitor is charging, starting at a voltage of 3.3, it would take a good 5 to 10 seconds for it to change to 3.31 with uh, these values. Now, if you were to use a 100 farad capacitor, this would take 10 times longer to go from 3.30 to 3.31 with this particular resistor in the circuit. So if you have a battery of 9 volts, and if the voltage fluctuates, let's say, or if you have a power source that's centered at 9 volts, if the voltage fluctuate between 8.4 and 9.6, the output voltage won't change if the fluctuation doesn't last that long. So in this case, using a supercapacitor helps to regulate the output voltage, especially if you have short-term voltage spikes or voltage drops. Now, decreasing the voltage to 5.5 volts still kept the output voltage at 3.3. Even though, without the capacitor, the voltage here would be 2.96 relative to ground. So because the voltage at this point is less than the voltage of the capacitor, what happens at this point is that the capacitor begins to discharge through the Zener diode. Now, the rate at which the voltage is decreasing across the capacitor is very low. So with the 5.5 voltage or the 5.5 volt battery being connected to the circuit, it took about a good 10 seconds for the voltage of the capacitor to drop from 3.30 to 3.29. So even with a lower voltage being applied to the circuit, the output voltage is still relatively constant. And the higher the capacitance of the supercapacitor, the greater the stability of the output voltage will be once it's charged to the desired level. So that's the only downside. You have to pre-charge the capacitors because they take a long time to charge. 
Now, if you don't want the capacitor to lose its energy by discharging through the Zener diode when the voltage drops, what you could do is add another diode. So let me redraw the circuit. So here we have our resistor and then our Zener diode in reverse bias mode. And then we're going to put a germanium diode here. A silicon diode has a voltage drop of, of around 0.6 to 0.7 volts, whereas the voltage drop of a germanium diode is much less. It's 0.3 volts. Now we're still going to use the same two supercapacitors with a capacitance of 10 farads. For this circuit, I pre-charge the capacitors to 3 volts, that is 3.3 .3 volts minus 0.3, using a 9-volt battery. After that, I ran some tests. I increased the voltage of the battery to 18 volts, and the output voltage remained at 3 volts. Even though at this point, this would now change from 3.3 .3 to 3.6, the output voltage still remained 3 volts. But at that point, the capacitor is being charged. But it took a long time for the voltage to go from 3 to 3.01 volts. Then I decided to decrease the voltage of the battery to 5.5, and the output voltage remained at 3. In this case, when the voltage drop, we know that the voltage here wants to be at 2.96 volts, which means, and the voltage here is 3 volts. So current wants to flow from a high potential to a low potential, but it can't because the diode prevents the capacitor from discharging in that direction. So as a result, the capacitor remains at 3 volts, even though the voltage of the battery drops. So even if we were to completely disconnect the battery, the multimeter will still read the voltage of the capacitor, 3 volts. So regardless if the voltage of the battery drops, the output voltage will be 3 volts. Or if the voltage of the battery or the source increases, the output voltage will charge up slowly, but it's going to be relatively constant. It's going to still stay around 3 volts for a certain amount of time. And how long it stays at 3 volts depends on the resistance that you choose and the capacitance uh, that you have. The best way to maintain a constant voltage for a longer period of time is to increase the capacitance of the capacitor because changing the resistor will change the voltage across the senior diode. Once you have it set to the voltage that you want, you want to keep the resistance the same. Just increase the capacitance to increase the stability of the output voltage. And so that's how you can create a voltage regulator circuit using a Zener diode and supercapacitors. The only downside is you need to pre-charge the supercapacitors to your desired voltage. Once that happens, this circuit works well as a voltage regulator.